Hi, my name is John Sundman, and in this video we're going to be picking up on the second part of the conversation I had with George Church in his laboratory office at Harvard Medical School in March of 2015. If you haven't seen the first part of this conversation, you might want to look for that. It's got a bit of an introduction to me and to George and to how it came to be that I was in his office having this conversation. Or skip that and just listen to what George has to say here. In this segment, he talks about the idea of civilization and how science fits into it. I hope you enjoy it. Please leave me comments or send me an email. Thanks. From my understanding, it maybe it's just my paranoia or, you know, loathing of, of some of the authoritarian elements in the, yeah. the secret government surveillance yeah. state, yeah. Um, that, you know, there's a pathology that, that develops in, the, in some of these organizations where it's like in any authoritarian regime, yeah. power is sought after for, for its own sake, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and uh, who has it said, you know, uh, Orwell or somebody said, you know, the only thing control wants is control. To, to my question, my open-ended question to you about civilization, because it, it occurs to me that civilization is the defense we have against yeah. this stuff. If we have a civil society where people yeah. just would never dream of doing anything yeah. like that, you know. Um, but well, the, I think part of the problem is people come, become addicted to different things. They become addicted to whatever they're good at. They're addicted to whatever they're exposed to. And it is very idiosyncratic. You don't, you don't start out necessarily, you're not born saying, I'm going to be power mad. Right. But you get good at it, and then you want more, and you want more of whatever it is. Right. It could, could be anything. It could have been chocolate, but it happened right. to be power. Right. And that's, that's a problem. And civilization doesn't really protect us against that. Great to have these, these are safeguards, but they're right. also endangering. Right. Uh, and I think that's the same thing's true of technology as it is for for civilization and humanity's sense, right. the same things that, that safeguard us also endanger us, right. right? And the more, the higher the tech, the higher the humanity, the higher the risk, right? right? In other words, uh, the better we are at predicting, protecting civil liberties, the better we are at creating, you know, Hitler's and right. and well, Stalin's that... and 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 uh, Idi Amin Dada's and stuff, right? But and how... you have to hope that in their their local environment is right. just as civilized as the civilization that created them. Right. But by definition, the first thing they do is they make their local environment different from right. the rest of the world. Right. 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 And then they have that environment sh sh grow, and that's part of the reason that they want power is they don't want to be killed. You know, as soon as they start becoming deviant, or as soon as they recognize that they are deviant by birth. Right. Right. Often, uh, they don't want to get. They want to turn that that bug into a feature. Right, and that's that's what happens. I mean, I think people, you know, I, I know certainly. I know when I was young, I realized I was deviant in some way, and I, and I did my best in my case to blend in rather than to, you know, to, to make the world rather than make the world fit conform to me. Yeah, and then uh, and then as I got older. It, the world seemed to be wanting to conform to me anyway, and right. so I said, well, that's not so bad. But right. I could see the temptation, you know, that, that, right. that if you learn that early enough before you have the maturity, um, then you just work really hard at it your whole life, uh, and you get good at it. Well, that's what, you know, I write novels, yeah. and so you have to have villains, yes. right? You have to, I mean, nobody wants to read a story about... But it's nice to have believable ones, ones right. where you can see... I, I could have been that person. That's right. the best villain. Whereas well, you could say, gee, with a, just a slight different change in luck, I could have been that villain. Right? Well, yeah. you could have been Monty Meekman in Acts the Apostles, right? Yes, yeah. that's possible, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And, and so... Thankfully not. <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope not. We don't know, right? You, you're maybe, I know. <laughs> right, right. Um, oh, you mean it might be in the future? Yeah. It, well, no, it's just might. you might be that evil guy, and I just don't know. You might be so yeah, well, so know. nefarious. <laughs> yeah, you would know. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, this. Yeah. So, so um, I personally believe, and maybe it's just the self-justification and, yeah. and things like literature and art and yeah. so forth to help yeah. us figure out big questions about how do we deal with these challenges and so forth. Yeah. In other words, I don't think it's just merely for amusement, but it provides oh, a useful far from it. Func no. function. Yeah. Uh, My point was not about amusement. It was yeah. about that as you get better at it, yeah. even in a very serious sense, better yeah. at humanities and at technology, you are... Um, but maybe not. I mean, maybe there's some win-wins out there. I mean, there are some... Definite cases where you can create higher security. Right. Um, there are some things that are 
nearly perfectly defensive. Uh, you know, like castles were fairly right. defensive. Yeah, right. they were really not offensive. Right. Uh, um, but as is often pointed out by my security friends, um, once you have really good defense, it yeah. puts you in an excellent position to be offensive. So, for example, if I have the perfect vaccine against Ebola, right, then I could weaponize Ebola, right, right, right. you know, right, and uh, and not before then. In right. fact, it's even dangerous to do research on Ebola, right? Because if, so if you haven't got some kind of good defense for for it, I mean, it could be physical, but vaccine is even better. And so, so anyway, there are relatively few things that aren't dual use, right? Really. Whether it's humanities or technology, and that's a, it's it, it's starting to feel a little bit like Girdle's theorem or something. Right, you know? right, it's right. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you want a really good system of mathematics, then you're going to end up with stuff that you can't prove. Right. If you want kind of a wimpy mathematics, then you can prove everything right. in it. Right. right, right. <laughs> it's it's, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of worthless mathematics. And the right. same thing. Uh, one of the fan things that this is riffing on civilization. I, I recently, I mean, I've, I've I and many people have thought about this their whole life is because we grew up in the space age. We think about, we read science fiction, we, we watch, I watched when I was a kid, the takeoffs oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and landings of, uh, I remember of, where I was of Mercury and Gemini yeah, and Apollo. Sure. And, uh, but, but recently I've been thinking, uh, thinking of it as a, a lens to look at the world, which is we assume we are going to the moon for a colony. Not just a visit. Right. And we're going to Mars for a colony, and we're going to send some space uh, ship out to Alpha Centauri and further solar systems, because we have reason to believe there are Earth-like planets on every star now. Right. And now, you know, Moon and Mars are are much much closer than a star. Right. But but in a certain sense, the civilization on your starship will be an end in itself. It doesn't right. have to actually arrive because it's going to be completely self-sustaining. Right. And, so and so I started saying, the interesting lens, it was like, for a while, it's how you look at the world. So suddenly everything I see through this lens. It's like when I was a 10th grader learning photography, serious photography. Yeah. Suddenly everything was like 35, you know, it's like this right, frame, right. this, frame this rectangle. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, and I was, and I would think about the world as, am I using a wide angle of telephoto? Even when yeah. there was no, even when I didn't have a camera, I was yeah. asking, you know. And the same thing's happening with this. Is I say, w here's um, influenza virus. Are we going to take influenza with us to the moon, intentionally? If we're not going to take influenza with us intentionally, are we going to allow it to happen accidentally? Right. right? So those are two big decisions, right? Right. My feeling is we're not going to do it intentionally or accidentally. We're going to take measures. Well, when you start taking those measures, you start interfering with civil liberties. Right. Right? Because in order for me to make sure, for anyone, yeah. you, know, you know, even a committee to make sure that nobody has flu, uh, it's draconian. Right. right. It would never fly in the U.S. of A. Right. right? To say, oh, everybody in Detroit is going to be flu-free. I mean, this goes way beyond vaccines. You know, right. it's like we're going to like take blood from you every day, and right. we're going to if you have push flu, you in, you're selected you're out. You're in a quarantine, or yeah. you're selected out, something like that. And then I say, well, beyond that, what about all the other pathogens? Right? Yeah. I mean, you know, are you going to make a pathogen-free colony? Right. And then we get into eugenics, eugenics uh, territory pretty quick, maybe. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It's yeah. it's like, are you going to put cystic fibrosis on the moon? Right. Right. Are you going to put Tay Sachs on the moon? Right. Um, carriers, are they fine? Well, then you're going to have homozygous there, you know. Yeah. And and the point is not so much, it's not eugenics in the old sense. You know, it's like we use these shorthand terms, many, 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 yeah. many, many shorthand terms, that some of them are loaded baggage and we know it, and other ones we kind of slip in. We use a metaphor right. innocently, and it makes us think about things differently. Right. Uh, and so with eugenics, you know, we think, we, we immediately think of, you know, Outlets. Germany in yeah. World War II. Yeah. But in fact, it was the USA right, that, yeah. that was, was one of the leaders in this. We sterilized 65,000 people in the right. USA, and it only stopped fairly recently. It was right. like in the 60s or 70s. 70s yeah. yeah, I mean, it was amazing. And uh, so, um, 
But eugenics isn't really the right word for what we're doing today. And it's not, and and whatever word today is not going to be the right word for space exploration. So right. today, I would say it's more like couples deciding things about the, what their children are going to inherit. Right. right. So my child is going to have some kind of, you know, iPhone-like thing. Right. You know, they're going to inherit that, and they're going to inherit, you know, um, um, you know, the kind of house that we have and that right. kind of stuff. And they're going to inherit no taste acts. Right. right. And that's, these are just things I'm excited about. But one of them gets labeled as eugenics, right? right. Even though now, to apl- back then, to apply eugenics, the government had to sterilize somebody without their permission, sometimes without the permission of anyone in their family. Right. Today, for the government to get involved, they have to, they'd have to do, instead of acting on behalf of the germ pool, right. they're acting against the germ pool because the parents were trying to improve the germ pool and right. the government's going to try to stop them. So the government involvement, which was the most repulsive thing in the past, now is repulsive again, but in the opposite right, direction. Right, right. And, uh, and then when you go into space, it's, a, it's yet another different thing. And you could say, one way to frame it is, what if it's voluntary, right? Is what if people sign up to go to Mars? I'll say it's entirely private enterprise. Yep. Government is involved to regulate it, but is not actually sponsoring it. Right. So that, that somehow that, that removes certain hackles from right. people, right? They say, oh, well, if government's not doing this, it's, yeah. it's a little bit better. It's free enterprise, you know? And these people are signing up. They know what they're getting into. In fact, they might even be funding it. It could be that all the people going to Mars are kind of semi-rich people that, that not only signed a, a sheet, they're not being used they're paying for they're it. Paying for it. They're yeah. paying for it. They're paying. They're 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 struggling to get there. Yeah. Kind of like the first rich folks that had the first cell phones. The first cell yeah. phones were these objects, you know, right, right, the size right. of a seven hundred bucks, the size of a refrigerator. Oh, much more than seven hundred bucks. <laughs> like tens of thousands of dollars that you put in your car. Right, right. Because you couldn't carry it in your pocket. Yeah, right? it was too yeah big. I remember them so well. You yeah. carry it in your Rolls Royce, and it would always be there with you. You know, or at least within a few. Hundred meters of where you are, and uh, and they paid for the option of being irradiated and taking who knows what kind of risks with, right. with their brain melting and stuff. And it turned out that what those risks weren't as big as some people worried about yeah. them being. Um, but we tested it out on the rich first. You know, right, the phase right. one clinical trials were done on the rich, right? And you could say they also benefited first, you know, because they yeah. could make all kinds of better deals because they had cell phones. Anyway, the same thing will ha- probably happen with Mars is it'll be the rich and whoever they invite right. uh, to go with them, which uh, uh, who they'll either do as posturing or as genuine caring for poor people, well, or they'll need servants, or who knows well, what will well, happen. Who knows? It'll be, it could be like the, the, the colonies of Europeans that came to North America, right? Yeah, they, they'd have rich investors get together, and yeah. but it wasn't quite so far away as Mars. Yeah. But it was similar in cost. I right. mean, you know, and for most people, it wasn't one-way a, deal. Like you're going, you're not coming back. That's right. Yeah. And and the cost of the of the boat and the supplies and the setting up the colony was would bankrupt a yeah. company if it didn't return get any return on investment. I mean, right. you know, and in fact, that was the source of the insurance industry was was essentially boats and colonies. Right. right. Anyway. Uh, so you, it's an interesting lens to look at things through. What what is it about our civilization we really like, right. and what are we willing to give up in order to retain the part that we like? Right. Yeah. In other words, if if we could establish a germ free colony on Mars, I mean, just think of how cool it would be. Right? Yeah. Is you could do surgery without without washing your hands. I mean, it's mind boggling. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's it's almost count, it's so counterintuitive. Yeah. You just, well, of course, I'd wash my hands before I do surgery. But well, would why? you? Would <laughs> you if there are no infectious disease? I mean, it used to be that that uh, sur- surgeons would deliver babies, right. and they were basically butchers, you know. Right. And they, you know, they might hack up a cow, and then yeah. they'd wipe their hands, and then yeah. they'd deliver a baby who had some disease, and they'd wipe their hands on their on the same mm-hmm. uh, frock, and uh, and yeah. they just keep doing that. That was right. it. And they were only wipe their hands because they were a little sticky, you know. Right. They weren't yeah. doing it to clean them up. Yeah. And so the the you know the the, the septicemia and other Infectious diseases were very, very high yeah. uh, in delivery by surgeons versus delivery by midwives, right. because no, midwives wouldn't do as many, and they wouldn't. Right. They'd, 
that'd be a little cleaner or who knows what, you yeah. know? Anyway, um, so imagine that. Imagine, and then you start asking, well, what, you know, what memes are we going to take with us? And, right. you know, they're, they're like, they're like infectious agents in a certain sense. Are we going to, if we're, if we're going to regulate that at all, if there's like one meme, we don't, it's, this becomes like China, right? right? They regulate the internet. Right. Well, maybe you could, it's hard for them to regulate right. the internet, right? Yep. So if you go up to Mars, you, it's much easier to internet, regulate the internet, right? right. Yep. Uh, you know, you could say, look, I don't want my kids knowing how to build a hydrogen bomb. Right. And I think that if I erase it from all of this drives that I take with me, right. and I don't construct any decent radio communication right. so that we can, so that everybody on the planet has access to, to, yeah. the, to the whatever internet, internet there is, yeah. maybe we could just Wipe it out. Wipe. forget about it. Yeah. But then, you, of course, you put your civilization in danger because if, if Earth wants a nuclear war on right. Mars and right. Mars doesn't know how to build nuclear yeah. weapons, they're in trouble, right? Yeah, that was the premise of, of a pretty, pretty awful film but, uh, yeah. by, uh, called The Village by the guy who'd made The Sixth Sense uh -huh. yeah, and and a, a, a group of people you find out at the end. It's, you see that you, if you've seen any of these guys' other movies, yeah, you, you, yeah. you know it's telegraphed yeah. from like the opening credits. But <laughs> but, right, yeah. but but I hate those. Yeah, right. I, I also hate the ones where they give it away in the trailer. Right, right. The right, trailer right. has <laughs> snippets from every <laughs> scene. Right. Every yeah. every major scene. Right. And then you're like, well, I what do I need I know to see what, the movie I think part, I know right? what's going right. to happen. Right. right. Yeah. Okay, well, right. in this particular, so these people are living in this primitive. Yeah. village right yeah. it's like you know they're living in like 17th century america uh -huh. and it turns out and they're being beset by these you know mysterious uh you know oh. uh, vampire like things I think that seen come at night uh, and at least a trailer for this right yeah. and, okay. and so the people are fearful of going beyond the perimeter of oh, the village yeah. because of these unknown ghost oh, demon beings yeah, out right. there yeah and so but it turns out that it's all an invention these people wanted to create a society that uh, got away from all the ills of the modern uh, world so they and so the only the elders had the knowledge that the modern world was out there oh, and and then so That's now any, cool. anybody watching this thing will know the plot of the movie. Spoiler alert. Yeah. So what if one of their kids gets sick and they yeah. need to go get some antibiotics? Yeah. So what do they do? Do they let the kid die? Uh, or do they, do they yeah. voluntarily yeah. violate their protocol of defense yeah. and right. send somebody out for these yeah. antibiotics? Yeah. And so, you know, they've been living there presumably for years. And so the young kids have no knowledge yeah. of the modern world, yeah. right? right? And they have successfully, like, taken the knowledge of the hydrogen bomb and kept it in their yeah. heads. And their yeah. kids have no knowledge of it. Yeah. But then... Yeah. You know, are they going to break it when it's when it's their kid who's yeah. sick, right? right? So well, especially you know, presumably if you the, the Mars colony is going to be less productive than all of the Earth, right. with Earth with all of its problems and so forth, is, is probably going to be almost as productive per capita, and the and then the multiplier is going to be gigantic. You know, right. seven billion people versus you know hundreds. Yeah. Uh, and so there's going to be constantly new technologies being developed that you didn't bring with you to Mars. Right. right. And do you like keep a little listening device out for a technology that could, you know, right. reverse aging or, right. uh, you know, something else. It's, it's very interesting. It's just a very interesting set of, uh, of a way of thinking about the world is what do we want, you know, what are we willing to do to, to achieve that new civilization?